Hi everybody, this is Gary Fong. So to get into really creative photography, you've got to take that flash off camera. Taking the flash off camera gives you dimension and the ability to create and shape the light using certain things like my snoot diffusers or color gels or whatever. But for the maximum effect, that flash has got to come off of the camera. So the question is, is how do I do it? How do I get that speed light off of my camera Number one, how do I mount it? What do I put it on in order to be able to position it correctly? And number two, how do I get it to trigger? So I'm gonna teach you really quick with the different ways of triggering the second flash, as well as show you the hardware setup options for mounting the flash on a stand. So let's get to the first question. How do we mount the flash on a stand? The flash has a hot shoe, right? And the stand has a screw. How do you get that hot shoe to mount on a screw? Well, there's different options. For example, when you bought your flash, there's a little tabletop stand. On that tabletop stand, you can mount the flash inside this hot shoe, and then on the bottom you'll see there's a little quarter 20 adapter that you can stick the stand in, which is nice. That way you can put the stand and you can put your flash on, but the problem is, is there's no way to rotate and pivot the head. So if you put it on a flash, it would only just basically go straight. You can rotate your flash head around a little bit, but you're not gonna be able to do much with aiming it down. And so so that gives you quite a bit of a limitation. The other thing too is I've noticed when I'm working with a second flash, I want to be able to position that angle very, very quickly. I want to be able to just kind of go like that and just make minute adjustments and then tighten it and hang on. So rather than, uh, I mean this is almost just like um, you know my free hand. So what I've done is I've taken a roller ball. There's different brands of these roller balls. I really like the Joby roller ball or any of them that have a very, very meaty knob. And so what I'll do is I'll just basically unscrew and then let this go ahead and... So the way this works is the light stand has a little screw on the end. This is a European screw. There's also an American screw called a tw quarter 20 and there are adapters. That's not important. What's important is you make sure that the roller ball that you get will fit right into this stand. Once this is into the stand, then you basically have yourself a really, really nice customizable positioning. So that's cool. You've got it on the stand and you've got the ability to just go ahead and turn. Now, I'm often asked, what kind of stand do I like to get? Let me show you the one that I like, and I've got a lot of them because it's my favorite. This is a Manfrotto model 5001B. And let me show you why I like it so much. It folds down into such a small thing that I literally can put it inside my camera case. Watch. Folds down upon itself like this. And so I can take the entire thing, including ball head, and I've got it in a package about that small. So now when I travel, of course, I just have my flash, my roller ball, and I've got a beautiful stand for positioning the light. Now the question is, how do I get the camera to trigger with the flash? And there's a number of different ways to trigger that off-camera flash. Number one is what's called a PC cord. Your flash has a connector where you can basically put a cord into the flash, connect it to your camera, and then it would communicate and tell the additional flash to work. You've got a cord to trip over. Second way to do it is with one of these very inexpensive manual triggers. Now these triggers do nothing but tell another flash how to fire. And I've got a lot of information on my different video resources on YouTube. These are very inexpensive, but they don't have any creative control whatsoever. You're basically going to have to shoot your flash on manual. The other way to do it would be through the camera's built-in wireless flash systems. And I've got a lot of videos on how to do this for the Pentax, Olympus, Sony, Canon, and Nikon families. Uh, they all have different infrared sensors, which basically will send a beam from your camera uh, to the receiving camera, and you can actually control the TTL and the measuring from within your camera. The limitation to this would be that you have to have these guys within line of sight. In fact, they actually have to see each other. So the red little sensors have to see each other. And again, there's more information of that all over my YouTube channel. If you're going to go the route of infrared, the way that you would mount it onto your flash would be to take that little foot that came with your flash and with this quarter 20, just basically screw it onto the roller ball, 
set your camera to its built-in flash. And you might want to uh, refer to your camera's manual, but really go to my YouTube channel because the, the manuals are typically very dry and they're hard to read. Okay, so you would use the stand that came with your camera and then you would use that as a pivot. Now, the best way to do it would be what's called the radio transmission way. Now, radio comes in different accessories. There are different ways of triggering radio. For example, the new Canon 600 EXRT has its own built-in radio system that is dedicated to the Canon 5D Mark III and it's very very sophisticated I've got instructions on how to do that on my YouTube channel I like very much to use dedicated radio slaves what I like about the accessory radio slaves is they all have their own built-in quarter 20 screw so you can screw the slave directly onto your roller ball and they have a hot shoe attachment on the top so that you can basically mount your flash directly onto the slave receiver. And that's nice because it's all just kind of built in. Now there's different radios on the market. This is called a Pocket Wizard. Pocket Wizard is one of the most popular. I've got videos to explain the differences between the available slave units that are out there. It has an antenna and of course it has the quarter 20 screw and the hot shoe where you can just basically mount this on your roller ball and away you go. This one is called the radio popper and the radio popper has a little eye that takes the infrared pulse from your camera, turns it into a radio which then will transmit all around to the other uh, flash units and will be able to control the radio without the necessity of having to be line of sight or the other limitations that come with infrared manual triggers or cords. The one that I prefer would be the Photix Odin. The Photix Odin is the one tripper that I've used that I just cannot get it to fail. What I like about it too is it has really big buttons on it so you can change your exposure groups, you can change your frequency channels and and especially on the controller itself, you've got these big fat buttons that allow you to control high speed sync, zoom, ratios between exposure groups and everything like that. Now radios typically are more expensive of a solution. You're probably looking at about $350 to $600 for a radio set, one transmitter, one receiver, and then you can get as many receivers as you want and create a multiple flash system. But they are the best. So there's a lot of things to consider, but please look through my YouTube channel for a lot of information on off camera camera flash. It's uh, just do a YouTube search for Gary Fong and you will find how to control all your different flash units with the new system. Now, now when you get into off camera flash it's very important that you're able to shape the light. Shape, control, and direct the light. So we've been able to control the direction with the roller ball. Now I want to be able to shape it. And one of the best ways to shape it is with the brand new Gary Fong 5th generation light sphere collapsible snoot with a speed mount. Or in short, we call it the speed snoot. The speed snoot has our brand new mounting system that's more accommodating to the larger flash head sizes like the Nikon SB910 or the Canon 600 EXRT or the Sony uh, 60AM. It allows you to shape the light in a very, very harsh, dedicated pattern. But one thing, and there's a lot of videos on how to use the snoot, but one thing I just want to point out to you that's really, really cool is look how small the system is. It's so small and lightweight, you can just drop it anywhere, position it, and start shooting. The biggest, biggest benefit about using speed lights with your flash photography, especially off-camera flash, is the fact that the speed lights can do what's called high-speed sync. High-speed sync allows you to take your shutter speed and go up to one eight thousandth of a second in broad daylight, whereas one of those big, big, powerful power packs that you see in studios or on location, maybe with a gas generator to power it, can only sync up to 1 250th of a second. 1 250th of a second is such a slow shutter speed that it will allow in a lot of daylight, whereas 1 8,000th of a second is so fast that it literally can make day turn into night. The problem, of course, with high speed sync on a speed light is that sometimes you run out of power because it requires a lot of power uh, to be able to do a 1 8,000th of a second sync. So by directing the flash very, very powerfully with the snoot, you've got the ability to bring 1 8,000th of a second outdoors and be able to eliminate all ambient light very, very quickly erase whatever light is around you and then start over by adding whatever light effects you want regardless of how bright it is and that's the cool thing and again that is a speed light exclusive so the speed lights 
allow you to shoot high-speed sync. High-speed sync takes away a lot of power, but my Snoot products bring that power back. Okay, so I hope I've given you just a little glimpse on how to really get going on your off-camera flash and that you feel like you're ready to go. And if you're not, all you need to do is go on my YouTube channel and I've got hundreds of videos to teach you the simplest things from setup to uh, very, very complex, advanced application of off-camera flash. <music>